that time of year where we are getting excited for the season. And of course, the annual Warren Miller film is premiering this week, actually Friday. Future Retro is coming out. And right now we have the privilege of speaking with one of the athletes that stars in that film, Kaylin Richardson. Kaylin, it's so good to have you here with us. This is crazy times, right? That, you know, it's like you're right in the room with me, but you're not. And that's kind of how Future Retro is. Uh, doing those virtual premieres this year because of COVID. But um, the first premiere was the East Coast premiere just this last Saturday, and it was a huge success. So I have a feeling that the Mountain Zone premiere this coming Saturday will be super fun. So tell me more about this premiere and how people can participate and what they can expect. Exactly. So you have to buy tickets, and one ticket works for four groups. So you can make, if the people are in your bubble and it's safe, you can make a little viewing party if you want to socially distance. A lot of people on the East Coast, it was still warm enough that they could do it outside. If we look outside in Park City right now, that's probably not going to happen. Um, but what happens is that you sign up, and then at 6 o'clock p.m. this coming Saturday, uh, there'll be a pre-show with Johnny Mosley. He talks to a bunch of the athletes. There's, like, really fun atmosphere. There's still giveaways that are actually attached to the zone. So that's why, because people always ask, why would there be an East Coast, a Mountain, and a West? Well, if you have been to Warren Miller premieres before, you know that there are specific deals and giveaways that go with your certain zone with ski resorts in that area, so to speak. Um, so at 6 o'clock p.m. it kicks off, but if you can't make it this Saturday but you still want to do it, that uh, code that you get will allow you to watch the movie for 48 hours past that time. So um, it's not like you have to be there right at 6 o'clock if it doesn't work for your schedule. Everyone has different conflicts and different obligations, so that uh, premiere sort of goes on for 48 hours so you can, so you can be a part of it. You're making it work with this fun premiere happening Saturday. You'll have giveaways, red carpet, all the things, just pivoting and making sure everything makes sense in this climate that we're in. And speaking of that, when you look back on a filming future retro, what stands out in your mind? I was, uh, I filmed in Killington, Vermont, uh, an awesome resort. The Beast of the East is the nickname for it. And I was there with my Helly Hansen teammate, Jimmy Ryan, who's actually a Killington local. So he showed me around the resort and we really hit it at a perfect time of year. And we also were there during the World Cup. So the Beast of the East, the Women's Technical World Cup has been there the last three years. And it was supposed to be there this season but because of the virus, they're not able to have any world, uh, Alpine World Cups in the United States this year. So what's really nice is for all those racing enthusiasts, they get a little taste of uh, World Cup ski racing through the Warren Miller movie this year. And what's weird to watch is to see, you know, we just had no idea, right? I, I, maybe I'm naive, but I didn't see this coming. And what's great is it's a bit of a celebration of what was going on then. And, you know, to I think that there's a lot of, hope going on and some good momentum. So even though I think we're still in the thick of, uh, of the virus, and I think that that will kind of continue through the winter, really think about it, Ski skiing, there's not many sports that lend themselves better to socially distancing and being outside. So I'm optimistic. I am too. Do you have a favorite moment that you really look back on when you think about future retro? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Absolutely. So we got early ups. We got on a snowcat one morning before the sun came up and went to the top of Killington Mountain. And Jimmy and I were just sitting there. We were, the, the cinematographers were watching the uh, the sun come up. I hope I didn't just, it looks like maybe I glitched, but I'll keep going. <laughs> um, so we're at the top of the mountain and we're watching the sun ri rise. And then we just got to cruise down this perfect groomer and it was that beautiful early morning light and there were snow crystals in the air and I will remember it for the rest of my life. I think a lot of pro skiers and I'm a big mountain skier will think about those amazing mountains in the backcountry but this was in a resort and I have to say it was so much fun to chase Jimmy down that mountain at right when the sun came up. It was special. Looking forward to seeing that. And Kaylin, I have to say, you've had a big year in 2020 and you are breaking molds. How does it feel to be that person who's really paving a way for many others to follow you? Because you're not the traditional Warren Miller ski athlete. <laughs> I don't know, if that's, you're very kind. I don't know if I'd say I'm necessarily breaking molds. I come from a ski race background, so that was one of the reasons why having the World Cup as part of the segment was so near and dear to my heart because I raced on the World Cup for about seven years on the USB team. That's what originally brought me to Park City. Um, so turning is what I'm all about. And so when I see people hit huge cliffs in the backcountry, which is sort of no more my community now, even though I kind of 
will straddle the racing and the big mountain. Um, I definitely keep my feet more on the ground these days, but uh, I love, I just love all of skiing. And I think that whether you're a racer or a backcountry skier or a jibber, we all have this common ground that we love the snow and we love to get out and have a great time in the snow. And I'm a new mom, so I'm ex especially excited to continue to push my boundaries and to inspire other moms to get out there, but also to share it with my daughter. And definitely a new mom, a professional skier. Really, Kaylin, you're one of a kind. Oh, Christine, you're so sweet. I, I, if that is some, if there's a little bit of truth to that, which I think, not really, I think there's, there's so many amazing moms. If you look around Park City, they're everywhere and they inspire me. But if I can inspire some moms out there to, you know, trust themselves and to push their boundaries, that would be, that would make me so happy. And I'm curious, when you look back to your ski career and your life skiing, what's your first memory on skis? Oh, I, okay, so it, they kind of are dual. Um, I grew up in Minnesota on the Mole Hills of the Midwest, so we would go a lot of times to Colorado for our big ski trip of the year. I have two older brothers, and I was a big tag along. I remember being in ski school in Colorado, and I remember this so vividly in that my, some, somebody wanted to help me carry my skis and I remember being like, I could do it myself. And I was so proud of myself. And then I also remember first seeing the mountains. I probably was like around six or seven. I think I'd seen them beforehand, but my first visceral memory of them. And I remember the freedom, you know, I even would be skiing with my parents, but I remember that at the top of the hill, I got to choose my way down. And I love that feeling of the wind in my face. It's funny that you can remember that, but it's not much different than what I feel now. So I think I was hooked from the very beginning when I first came to the mountains. And I think that stubbornness that you're describing, that determination, that independence has really served you well, going from ski racing to now starring in these films. Really, when you look back on everything that you've been able to do, I think that stubbornness, that determination has really been pivotal in your experience. I completely agree, especially with the ski racing career. When your self-worth is up on that scoreboard every weekend, there's a lot of peaks and valleys, right? And um, I mentor a couple young athletes and I always tell them, you just gotta have faith and you just gotta trust that you know what a, what a strong turn feels like. And the biggest thing about skiing is I think it builds character. And it's a sport that you can do your entire life. I remember my dad told me when I was really young and struggling with some bad results that he said, Kaylin, it's just sliding down on a hill, on snow, on two wooden boards. You can get you you're definitely allowed to feel bad because i know you worked really hard but keep it in perspective and on the flip side of that it is sliding on a hill on snow on two wooden boards which is so much fun and i my biggest goal in life is that i continue to do that well into my late years i hope until the end of my days i'm still skiing and as audiences watch future retro what do you hope they'll gain from this you know we're coming into watching this ski film differently than other years unsure of what the season will bring unsure of everything that's happening in real time in real life so really what do you think is the biggest benefit to coming and going back to your roots and really enjoying a ski film you said it perfectly is it's about that enjoyment it's about that joy of of what skiing really and, and snowboarding any winter sports what winter means to us as a community and i mean that collectively globally and that i think that some people there's some anxiety we're, we're moving into the colder winter more winter months in the northern hemisphere which require us to be inside more but i think that it will really get people excited about the ski season and maybe start them sort of brainstorming ways they can do it safely and at the very end of the day it's just a fun time right where I think it's been a stressful time, regardless of where you land on different ideologies, that just to be able to watch a movie and with a bunch of people that you might have very different belief systems then, but what you do is you all love skiing. And I really do think that that's a beautiful thing that can bring people together. So my main aim is that hopefully it gives people a little reprieve of maybe what they've been feeling and it also gets them inspired and excited for the ski season and thinking about some ideas of how they can continue to still harness that fun that we have in the winter. And in anticipation of this premiere that's coming up this Saturday for the Mountain West, here on our show today, we're gonna give away some of your favorite skis. So tell me more about your favorites. Um, so I'm a vocal skier through and through. I skied on both my Olympics and vocal, and I really have to say that I'm one of those lucky people that I have a full quiver, which I know is 
a complete indulgence, but being a pro skier, that is one of the perks. So I'd say really, I've never skied a vocal speed that I didn't like. Obviously there are some that sort of will lend themselves more to my powerful kind of race, racery type of skiing, so to speak, but I've loved them. The, the construction of the ski is so stable. Uh, they really try to have all the technological parts of it in there. And uh, I love that part of it. Well, we are going to do that right at the end of our show today. Kaylin, anything else we need to know before we get ready to watch Future Retro? I would say that if you can make it this Saturday, uh, definitely join in. Um, I know it's not the same as being in a theater. It's not the same as meeting the athletes and getting us to sign posters. But hopes are that next year we'll be back to you know business as usual. But in a way, maybe kind of enjoy this difference. I, that's what I've really been telling people is, it's okay to, I think that you need to communicate and talk about things that are tough. Um, but at the same time, I think that there are ways to celebrate this little nuance because hopefully it's just a blip and we'll all look back and be like, man, 2020, there was, that was a crazy year, but there were some really great parts of it too, because it made our family come together or it made us really think about what was important to us. So try to look on the silver linings is what I'd say. And if you can't make it this Saturday, the West Coast premiere will be the following Saturday. So two weeks from this Saturday, and you can still sign up for that one if this weekend does not work for you. And Kaylin, how can we get more information about you and follow along with your inspiring life? Oh, thanks. I would say the best way that um, I am keeping up to date on letting people know what's going on in my life is Instagram. And my handle is at Kaylin Richardson, just my name, one word, and K-A-Y-L-I-N. And I love people to get involved. And if you see me on the slopes, obviously this is a little bit different of a year. Most of the time I give you a big hug when you recognize me. This year, maybe I'll give you an elbow or an air high five, but I ski around Deer Valley all season. That's my home resort. So I'm here local. Um, I love Deer Valley. And from what it looks like, I don't wanna speak too soon, but it looks like we're gonna have an epic winter. Well, Kaylin, thank you so much for joining us here on Parkside Television. It's always a pleasure having you on our station, and we really appreciate the time that you've spent with us during this busy moment with this premiere coming up, and of course, as a new mom. And you can find out more about the premiere at warrenmiller.com. And don't go anywhere because we're going to be giving away some vocal skis, Kaylin's favorites, right after this. Stay with us.